All right, let's go ahead and get started. I do want to welcome you to this worksheet. This is limiting reactants and percent yield. We're going to divide this one up into three parts. That'll give us a chance to kind of slow down and make sure that we understand everything about these concepts. So here we go. Number one says when 16.3 grams of magnesium and 45.2 grams of oxygen gas react, the question is how many grams of magnesium oxide will be formed? And we're to identify the, ident the limiting and excess reactants. Folks, remember that we have really two jobs here. The first is to identify what's limiting. Either magnesium or, oxide is, or oxygen is going to run out first. One of these two reactants is going to be depleted before the other. And we want to define which one is which, which is going to run out before the other. That one's called the limiting reactant. The other one is called the excess reactant. So that's our first line of business right there. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to from the limiting reactant, determine the number of grams of product that we're going to obtain. So let's get started. The way that I recommend that we go about this is to take a look at both of the reactants. We've been given two numbers, 16.3 and 45.2 grams of magnesium and oxygen, respectively. Now, I want to caution you again simply looking at these two numbers and saying, well, 16.3 is a smaller number than 45.2. Magnesium must be limiting. No, not necessarily. Remember that we're looking at a mole-to-mole-to-mole -to -mole -to -mole relationship, not gram-to-gram-to-gram. -to -gram -to -gram. So it's important that we convert these into moles and then make the comparison rather than just looking at the number of grams. So here we go. We're going to start with the magnesium, 16.3 grams of magnesium over 1. We're going to convert that immediately into moles. We look on the periodic table to determine the number of grams per mole for magnesium. It's 24.31 grams of magnesium per mole. That's going to allow me to cancel this unit with this unit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mole-to-mole -mole bridge. I've got moles of magnesium, but I need to get to product. So the relationship between magnesium and magnesium oxide is 2 to 2. 2 moles of magnesium produces 2 moles of magnesium oxide. Now you might think of that as being a wasted step. It's not. Because of the fact that we've got to do this, we've got to follow the same procedure no matter whether it changes mathematically our answer or not. Now, 2 divided by 2, of course, is 1, so it won't change this mathematically, but we still have to do this step. So now we've got moles of magnesium oxide. We're almost home. What we need to do now is convert that to mag grams of magnesium oxide. I'll do that by simply doing adding up magnesium and oxygen, the atomic masses for those two respectively. And then I'm gonna, when I add those up, I get 40.31 grams of magnesium oxide per mole. That's going to permit me to cancel that unit with that unit. Now I'll get my calculator and I'll multiply 16.3 by 40.31, hit the equal button, and then divide by 24.31. When I do that, I get this number, 27.0 grams of magnesium. And before you write that down as the product, remember, We've only tested one of the two reactants. We've only tested magnesium. We need to see how many grams of oxygen, how many, how many grams of magnesium oxide could be produced from the 45.2 grams of oxygen and an infinite amount of magnesium, excess, in other words, magnesium. So let's do that. So we're going to start all over again with 45.2 grams of oxygen this time, and we're going to convert that to moles. Remember, it's 32, not 16 grams per mole, because this is not just oxygen, it's O2. That's going to allow me to cancel this unit with this unit, and I'm going to have moles of oxygen gas. And now that I've got oxygen gas, I need to convert that to product, right? So the, do, the way to do that is through a mole-to-mole -mole bridge. So one mole of oxygen gas produces two moles of oxygen, uh, magnesium oxide. Two moles of magnesium oxide produced from one mole of oxygen. It's a two-to-one mole-to-mole relationship. I'm going to cancel this unit with this unit, and I'm left with moles of magnesium oxide. One step left, and that is to convert to grams of magnesium oxide. Don't have to do the addition again. I've already done it here. Just look right here. 40.31 grams of magnesium oxide is the mass of one mole. This unit and this unit are going to cancel away, and I'm going to be left with grams of magnesium oxide. Now I'm going to multiply across 45.2 times 40.31, hit the equal button and divide by 32. This time I get 114 grams of magnesium oxide. Now I can do the comparison that I was looking at. 27 is obviously smaller, it's a smaller number than 114. So that is the amount of product that I'm going to form. What was the reactant that formed that product? Let me go back, 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 back. It was magnesium. So the limiting reactant then is 
magnesium, all right? The other one must be the excess reactant. So I'll abbreviate that with ER. The excess reactant then is the oxygen gas. So I've identified the limiting reactant to be magnesium, the, the excess reactant to be oxygen gas, and I have one more task left to go, and that is that I must identify the amount of product. It is the lesser of the two, the 27 grams. So the amount of product then, in this case, is 27.0 grams of magnesium oxide. And I'm done with number one. Okay? Let's take a look at the second problem now. Number two says this. It says if 2.45 grams of iron are placed in 1.5 liters, 1.5 liters of a 0.25 molar hydrochloric acid solution, how many grams of FeCl2, that's iron 2 chloride, are obtained? We want to identify the limiting and excess reactants in this single replacement reaction. So again, we've got iron plus hydrochloric acid yields iron 2 chloride and hydrogen gas. It's a 1 to 2 to 1 to 1 mole to mole to mole relationship. How am I going to, how am I going to approach this? Well, essentially the same way, but this time I'm, I'm given molarity in one case and grams in the second case. So let's start with the grams of iron. So I'm going to look at this number right here, 2.45 grams of iron, and I'm going to compare that to the 1.5 liters of 0.25 molar hydrochloric acid to see which one gives me the less amount of product. So let's start with the 2.45 grams of iron. We start with 2.45 grams of iron, put that over 1, and divide that by 55.85 grams of iron per mole. That's the amount of, that's the mass of one mole of iron from the periodic table. This and this will cancel, and I'm left with moles of iron. I'm going to do a mole-to-mole -mole bridge to get me to product. One mole of iron produces one mole of iron chloride. It's a one-to-one mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Again, not a wasted step. I have to do it. Now I've got moles of iron, iron 2 chloride. Just change it to grams. Add up iron, the atomic weight for iron, plus two chlorines. And when I do that, I get 126.75 grams of iron, chlor iron 2 chloride. Check me on that calculation. So now I'm done. All I have to do is calculate, multiply 2.45 times 126.75, divide that by 55.85, and here's the number that I get, 5.56 grams of iron 2 chloride, right? Now, only halfway done because I have to do the whole thing all over again now because of the fact that I have to compare this 5.56 to some other number, right, to see if this is the lesser of the two. How do I do that? Well, this time I've been given for the other reactant, the hydrochloric acid, 1.5 liters, and it's a 0.25 molar solution. Remember, molar means moles per liter. Molar means moles per liter. That capital M means moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So I'm going to start with the 1.5 liters of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to multiply these two numbers. So I'll multiply it by 0.25 moles of hydrochloric acid per liter. These two units are going to cancel away, leaving me with moles of hydrochloric acid. That's what I want. Remember, I've got to get to moles immediately, by any means possible, including multiplying volume by, by molarity. So now I've got 0.25 moles of hydrochloric acid on top, together with my 1.5 liters on top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mole-to-mole -mole bridge. Two moles of iron of hydrochloric acid produce one mole of iron 2 chloride. So one mole of iron 2 chloride produced by one uh, two moles of hydrochloric acid. This unit and this unit are going to cancel away and I'm left with moles of iron 2 chloride. Now just a matter of converting that to grams. Here it is, 126.75 grams of iron chloride, iron 2 chloride per mole. I'm going to cancel this unit with this unit and I'm left with this value, 24 grams of FeCl2. Now I'm in a position to make the comparison. 5.56 is obviously smaller than 24. Therefore, the limiting reactant must have been the reactant that produced that smaller value. So I'm going to go all the way back. Iron must have been the limiting reactant. So I'll say that the limiting reactant then was the iron 
The other one, the hydrochloric acid, must have been the excess reactant. So the excess reactant, again, was the hydrochloric acid. How much product was formed? Well, look to see which is the smaller of the two values. It's the 5.56, so I'll put 5.56 grams of FeCl2, iron 2 chloride, and that'll do it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.